There was an overwhelming number of requests for this video. I'm going to show you today how I bullet journal. So in a video recently, I mentioned that I've been bullet journaling now for the last nine months and I said that I loved it. And then the comment section kind of blew up surprisingly with people saying that they wanted to see how I do it. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to disclaimer right now because I mentioned it in that video as well that my design for it is incredibly minimal. I know there's a lot of YouTubers who create the most beautiful bullet journal spreads um, and I envy their artistic abilities. But for me, I think bullet journaling is a bit more about pouring out and organizing my thoughts so I can be as efficient as possible. But as with everything I'm gonna say today, do with it what you want. This is just my method. Uh, the beautiful thing about bullet journaling is you can customize it however you'd like. Now I genuinely don't know how I functioned before learning the system because I was someone who had notes everywhere on my iCal, the stickies of my computer, on the notes section of my phone. I would jot things down on random scrap pieces of paper. And then it always felt like there was information coming at me from every direction, but at the same time, I couldn't really find anything when I was looking for it. But now with this system, I feel like I've got a little built-in secretary always reminding me of what I need to do. So that's nice. Um, so the lowdown. Today I'm going to show you the start of my 2020 journal and give you a skeletal structure of how I plan my year, month, week, and so forth. Periodically, I'm also gonna show you into the 2019 journal just for reference and a brief thank you as well to audible for partnering with us on today's video but i'm going to chat more about them at the end for now we're going to delve into what you're going to need to get started so two things are essential of course which is going to be the bullet journal and a pen or a pencil i'm going to link everything that we're using in the description box in case you're interested two other things i highly recommend they're not necessary but very handy is a whiteout and a ruler I think one reason people don't even start with bullet journaling is because of perfectionism. And to that I say, whiteout is your best friend. And then finally, two items you might wanna consider, but they're just for fun. Uh, that's gonna be markers and washi tape. Okay, let's get journaling. I'm starting this journal with a key, kind of like a legend. So to start off, I like to indicate how many boxes there are, both vertically and horizontally, because it sucks when at the start of each month you forget and then you have to count them one by one all over again. So one of my main methods is to split things up into columns of three. So here I'm also indicating how many boxes are needed in order to split a page up into three parts. So now I'm gonna go on to show you what some symbols mean. These are not my own. The system comes from Ryder Carroll, who's the creator of the whole bullet journal method. So a dot or a bullet indicates a task. Now, if you put an X over that dot, it's gonna indicate that the task has been completed. An arrow to the right means the task is being moved to a following day. And then a dash is when it's something you just need to note, like a birthday or an event. It's not a task in itself. When you cross something out, it means that it's canceled or no longer relevant. And finally, a star or asterisk means that it's something important. You're welcome to create your own system, of course, whatever works for you. Next, we're moving on to creating a year at a glance. For this section, I begin by splitting each page into three columns. At the top of each column goes a calendar. I like to put Monday through Sunday written along the top of each of those months from January through to December. This part can definitely get a little bit repetitive with writing days of each month over and over again. But the plus side is you only have to do this once at the start of each year. The section is where I put birthdays, appointments, anniversaries, upcoming events, holidays. Pretty much anytime somebody tells you about something that's happening in the future, put it in here so that you don't forget. Here you can see I'm transferring over the relevant dates from my previous journal to my new one. So this way you can kind of see the first half of the year spread out over the first two pages and the second half of the year spread out over the second two pages. So that's your year at a glance. Next we're moving on to the month at a glance. So here we're gonna create the first month's calendar, which is of course January. And the first month is always the hardest because you have to count and divide the squares properly. And then in the next month, it's really easy because you just kind of copy and paste that template over. Again, I write Monday through Sunday along the top, and then I plop the days of the month into each square. And now is the part where you refer back to the year at a glance and transfer over any relevant dates, and then you're done. This year, I'm also gonna do something different, which is using a little bit of washi tape, folding it over the edge of the paper, so that way in the future, it's really easy for me to just flip back to that calendar really quickly, instead of needing to flip through a whole bunch of pages first looking for it. 
Next, we're going to do the start of month essentials, or at least what I find essential personally. The first thing I like to do at the start of each month is a quick check-in with myself, a place where I can just write down where I'm at emotionally for this section. I try to write a lot of I feel statements, like I feel happy or sad because. I also try to check in with myself physically, um, which has actually come a lot in handy because about a year ago, I fractured my tailbone in a snowboarding accident and keeping track of how the progress has been is really handy because I feel like otherwise the days and months just kind of bleed together. So you can put anything physical here if you have aches or pains or if you want to make note of a skin condition or your bowel movements, anything goes. And then another thing I also like to keep track of is where I'm at spiritually, which sounds super hippie, but it's essentially just a place to check in with if I'm feeling aligned with what's important to me. I write down how my relationships are going, things like that. And so that's just me checking in. And then the next section is quite easily one of my favorite sections of the entire bullet journal, and that is the brain dump. I know I'm somebody who's prone to anxiety, and sometimes I get even more tense when I'm trying to keep track of everything that needs to be done, things I need to do, if I need to keep track of ideas. So when something pops up in my mind, instead of letting it occupy prime real estate in there, I just open up this section of the journal and plop it down, and it frees up so much mental capacity. It's amazing. So most of the things that do pop up in my head are related to pickup lines, so I gave that the most space here, but I also have a little personal section at the bottom, but you can break this up in whatever way is relevant to you. I'm gonna show you an example here of how these two pages end up looking when it's all filled out. And now we're gonna move on to the next section. These are kind of optional start of the month pages. So first up is the tracker or the habit tracker. I don't do the tracker every month. I do it maybe every three to six months. I think that one reason people don't keep up with journaling when they've started it is because they give themselves too many things to do. At least that's what I did when I first started. And this part might be one of those things that makes it feel like bullet journaling is just a bit too much. So use it at your discretion or maybe just try to track a few things as opposed to several. I do think it's really helpful for mindfulness purposes to see how often things are happening in your life, like how often you're practicing mindfulness through yoga or meditation, or in my case, how often I'm uploading a YouTube video or a blog post. If there is one thing I can say about the habit tracker though, it's to use it as a tool to build awareness, not as a tool that's gonna let you kind of criticize, self-loathe, judge yourself for not doing enough or not being enough. That is definitely not the point of this thing. It is just to build awareness. Maybe that's another reason I don't do it every month just to kind of take it easy, you know? So the page next to that, we are going to write a list of gratitudes. This is probably the most cliche, but also the most underrated section. I feel like when I'm writing a list of gratitudes, it can sometimes feel like, you know, a waste of time. But I think the effects of writing these lists, they, they take hold slowly. You don't really realize it right away. I think it's helped me to change my outlook to kind of just generally day-to-day -day appreciate the little things a bit more. I think we also live in a bit of a toxic complaining culture. I complain pretty often, and I think when I take a moment to write down some gratitudes, it shifts things, it, it, it humbles you, it brings you back down to earth. So I try to write down three gratitudes a day. I also try to squeeze it all onto one line if I can, so that way I can see a whole month's overview on one page, which is always nice. If you're having a bad day, it's a nice thing to refer to. And I don't always keep up with the tracker and, and the gratitudes. Sometimes I miss it and that's okay. Just pick it back up whenever you can. It's not a big deal, right? So now we're gonna move on to the next section, which is the week at a glance. For this section, we're again gonna split each page into thirds and at the top of each column, we're gonna put little boxes where we can fill in the days of the week. In this layout, Saturday and Sunday are together in the rightmost column, just because I generally have fewer tasks on the weekend. So once I've filled that all in, I'm gonna go and try to find my washi tape so that I can flip back to the month overview, and then I transfer over any relevant notes for that week. I feel like that repetitive motion of carrying things over from year to month and then month to week really helps to cement it in my mind so that I don't forget. And then I try always the night before to plan my next day. And I always start by writing out the numbers one through three at the top of each column. And this is where I write down the three most important high priority things I want to get done that day. And I think this is key. I think sometimes we X things off of our list, these menial tasks that we got done and we falsely feel accomplished when in reality we didn't get any of the critical things done, you know? So I think 
think three important things need to go first and then you can jot note any other tasks that need to be done underneath that. I also like to take a moment to just go back to my brain dump section, see if there's anything I might be able to carry over to that day. No pressure if not, just take a look. And then some days I like to also get an overview of what my hours are gonna look like in that day. And I wanna block my tasks into sections. So that's where I use the bottom of that column if I need to. So I put in the times from about 7 a.m. to 8 or 10 p.m. And then I block my tasks accordingly. Remember, you want to schedule those high priority items first. I personally really like this method because I like to be able to see the whole week at a glance on these two open pages. But if you think you need more room, you can spread it out over four pages, just using the same structure. So three top priority items come first, smaller tasks go under that, and then you can block your time if need be. Now, as you go through the day, remember that you want to X things off when you finished it. And if you didn't get it done in that day, just put a little arrow to indicate that you're going to carry it over to the next day or one of the following days. As for the following blank pages, I just like to leave those blank for now. You never know when you want to take notes from a meeting or if you have certain ideas that you want to write down or an accomplishments list. Honestly, anything goes. It's nice to just have it kind of sandwiched between two separate weeks. And it's only when a new week is over that I'll go ahead and create another week at a glance spread in my journal. So if I can summarize, I started off with a key or a legend, and then I went on to making a year at a glance, which is spread over four pages. I then moved on to a month at a glance, so this first month being January. And then we moved on to the start of month essentials, which for me is a monthly check-in, as well as my favorite, the brain dump. And then we're following this up with the optional habit tracker and the highly recommended gratitudes list. And then finally, I move on to the week at a glance. Again, customize this one however you'd like. 2020 is coming up, so with the new year, some of you might be interested in creating a goals or a vision page. If there's only one thing I can recommend, it would be in the beginning, keep it really simple. Keep it minimal so that way you keep up with the bullet journaling. Like I said, I, I've, I've seen so many people just stop because they give themselves too many things to do, but that's just my two cents. And a brief thank you as well, again, to Audible for partnering with us on today's video. If you're looking for a resource on bullet journaling, I can definitely recommend checking out Ryder Carroll's audiobook, The Bullet Journal Method. Track the past, order the present, design the future. He's actually the creator of the whole Bujo system, as it's called, and he does a really wonderful job at explaining the many benefits of bullet journaling. One of which he points out is something I really resonate with, which is that journaling is mindfulness meets productivity. It's really refreshing to be able to step away from our data or our Wi-Fi, these things that get us easily distracted by notifications or emails or social media. When we bullet journal, it's just this time where we take a moment to live with some more intention. And as I've mentioned, it can sometimes get really repetitive, this act of writing the dates down over and over again, and it can take a little while. So if you want, you can also listen to an audiobook while you're doing it, maybe even an audiobook like this one, just to motivate you and get you even more in the mood for all the benefits that come with bullet journaling. So if you're interested in getting this book for free or any other audiobook that you'd like, plus a 30 day free membership, visit audible.com forward slash pickup lines or see the link in the description box below and audible members now get one free audiobook per month plus two free Audible originals. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Never made one like it before. So if you did like it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It always means a lot. And if you use any of these techniques or anything, take a picture, share it on Instagram. It's always fun to see. Hope you guys have a lovely start to your new year. Thanks a lot for watching. Pickup Limes signing off and we'll see you in the new year.